Thanks for joining us this evening on TKO8 Local News. Tragedy has struck the Harrison area in the overnight hours. A fire in Harrison has killed a man and two of his dogs. 93-year-old Robert Rotson was killed in the blaze. The blaze broke out around 4.30 a.m. this morning in the 500 block of Robinson Street. Fire Chief Marvin Holt says two others suffered smoke inhalation. Investigators are looking for the cause, and Holt says it's possible the home did not have a working smoke alarm. And a man accused of stealing a truck described himself as a pillar of society as he uh, sat in the Baxter County Jail. Lee Edward Willie's current legal problems began when a man reported the theft of his 1998 Dodge truck on April 26. The victim said Wiley had come to his home and asked to borrow the truck. The victim had turned Wiley down because, because uh, when the victim got ready to use the truck, it was missing. On April 27th, the vehicle's owner reported he was following his own missing truck north on Highway 5. The vehicle was finally stopped on County Road 27, and Willie was arrested by Lawman, who became engaged in that chase. Lawman at the scene reported finding digital scales and methamphetamine in the vehicle. Wiley claimed he had borrowed the vehicle, but admitted he had not returned it as promised. He, uh, he, his term, he terms the situation as a borrowed vehicle deal gone bad. Brandy Brian Barnes of Valley Springs entered a guilty plea to charges against him stemming from two break-ins at the same house in mid-January of this year. The 37-year-old Barnes was given 10 years in prison with three uh, to serve and seven suspended by Judge Gordon Webb. On January the 12th, the victims reported their residence had been broken into and reported three days later the garage door at the home had been left up about a foot. The victims were in the process of relocating to another Arkansas city and had moved most of their possessions out of the house but had, complete, had not completed the move at the time of the break-ins. The state did not add a specific number of extra years to his sentence because of the habitual offender status, but chose to adjust his sentence to reflect, uh, uh, reflect it. Restitution has yet to be determined in his case. Working on a new deadline, a split Alpena school board voted last week to ask voters again for a property tax millage increase to build a new high school. The uh, district asked voters for a 3.4 mil increase to pay the school's portion of a $5.2 million project. It would be a 28,000 square foot two-story building. The district was approved for about $2.5 million in state partnership funding to offset the cost. However, voters defeated the request in March with about a 59% of votes against. Superintendent David Westenhauser said he and the board president, Kenneth Davis, recently went to Little Rock to meet with state officials about options the district might now face. In a letter to the district, state officials said the district could be put on the academic facilities distress list. That would include a removal and replacement of the superintendent and the board of directors. The district could also be required to stop spending funds on sports or any other programs that are not a part of the adequate education and put that money into an academic facility escrow account. Because a school can only ask voters for a tax increase once in a calendar year, a special election will have to be scheduled for 2019. And a meeting for parents and students interested in creating and joining the first Lego League robotics team will be held Tuesday evening at the Hackler Intermediate School Library in Mountain Home. Uh, uh, Mountain Home tomorrow, excuse me, at 5.30 p.m. Information will be available on how to develop and join a local team to compete in the 2018-19 season, which starts in late August. Stay with us. Be back in a moment. We'll take a look at some headline news from around the region as TK08 News continues. <music> Thank you.
on any given day here at Main Street Service Center, we might be working on a Ford like's on the four post lift over my shoulder, or an Infiniti that's back on the back bay, or a Toyota, or a BMW, or right here a Hyundai. You just never know what's going to come into the shop and what their needs might be. But you can rest assured that at Main Street Service Center, whatever you're driving, we can take care of it for you, whether it's oil and filter changes all the way up to engine and transmission replacements. And get this, we've been in business for 29 years, and there's still things that we can't do, and we're not too proud to say it. So if you bring us something and it's over our head or out of our capabilities of expertise or tools, we're not too proud to say it because we want your vehicle fixed correctly, right, and the first time. Plants, plants, and more plants. That's what you'll find at Camp's Plants in Harrison. Perennials, annuals, ferns, hanging baskets, shrubs, roses, decorative trees, and the largest selection of garden vegetables in the area. With different varieties arriving weekly, you're sure to find the perfect plant, shrub, or tree at the best price in the area. Camp's Plants and Business for over 33 years in Harrison. Stop in at White Oak Station on Caps Road in Harrison and fill up with Shell Gasoline, the highest quality gasoline with more miles per gallon, saving you money. Sign up for the Fuel Rewards card and save five cents per gallon every time. Plus, get an extra five cents off on Razorback Wednesdays. That's a savings of 10 cents per gallon. Check out their expanded deli and hot and cold food items. Caps Road, White Oak Station, where customer service is their number one goal. We'd like to tell you our reason for raising the minimum legal sale age of tobacco products from 18 to 21. We will not be big tobacco's replacements for those who die each and every day from tobacco-related illnesses. 18 and 19-year-old tobacco users are a major supplier of tobacco products for younger youth. Raising the legal age to purchase tobacco or nicotine products to 21 eliminates access to those suppliers, giving us a brighter future, a tobacco-free future. We, we are, are loud, loud and proud, and, proud and, and we will define our own future. future. For more information, visit SOSProjectPrevent.com. This message is brought to you by your Master Tobacco Settlement Dollars at work. A Little Rock man now faces numerous felony charges after officers discovered 14 pipe bombs at his home and two uh, at his girlfriend's home. 47-year-old James Patrick Huff was arrested Monday on 16 counts of criminal use of prohibitive weapons and a single count of possession of firearms by a certain person. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says that officers discovered the pipe bombs in a container buried in Huff's yard. Huff has also been linked to pipe bombs discovered last week at the home of his ex-girlfriend, <coughs> excuse me, Angela Poole. The police report says that Poole alleged that Huff threatened and harassed her prior to her landlord discovering the explosives. Huff's mother alleges the pipe bombs belong to her late husband. A man is suing a northeast Arkansas city and its police department, alleging that an officer escalated a situation with his son resulting in his death. Chris Finley filed the lawsuit March 30th in the U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of Arkansas. It, uh, its defendants include the Jonesboro Police Department, the city, and Officer Heath Loggins. 31-year-old Christopher Grant Finley was fatally shot inside his home on April 14th of 2015 after police received a complaint that he was yelling and holding a baseball bat in his yard. Loggins says the sh fired shots after Finley struck his arm with a machete. Chris Finley has said his son suffered from mental illness, including uh, schizophrenia. The lawsuit accuses the city of not properly training its officers. A weekend safety inspection at a weight station resulting in authorities seizing several pounds of pot again. According to the Arkansas Department of Transportation, the police discovered 200 pounds of cannabis while conducting the inspection at the Alma weight station on Interstate 40 Sunday afternoon. It was found in the sleeper berth, a compartment attached to the truck's cab 
where the driver takes rest. The driver was identified as Arando Ruiz of Miami, Florida. Ruiz was taken to the Crawford County Detention Center and faces charges of possession of a controlled substance with the intent to deliver and possession of drug paraphernalia. Arkansas Highway Police has completed five major drug busts in the last six months at the Alma Way Station. About 1,200 pounds of cannabis and 1,000 vials of cannabis oil were seized during those stops. The Central Arkansas Drug Task Force spent Tuesday helping the Ball Knob Police Department arrest 16 people on drug warrants. According to a Facebook post made by the group, the arrests made were due to illegal sales and methamphetamine distribution across the Ball Knob area. The arrests come after a year-long investigation. Anyone with additional information regarding this case can contact the Central Arkansas Drug Task Force at 870-279-1006. An Arkansas judge barred by the state Supreme Court from hearing death penalty cases says justices are retaliating against him for exercising his First Amendment rights. Pulaski County Circuit Judge Wendell Griffin has sued the justices saying they improperly took him off of execution cases. His lawyer asked a federal appeals court late Monday to reject the justices' request to halt depositions and discovery during the appeal process. The justices say their deliberations should be off limits. Griffin last year took part in a death penalty protest after ruling the State Department of Correction could not administer an execution drug after a company questioned whether it had been obtained through proper channels. Griffin says the state Supreme Court barred him from cases even though no one asked for such a ruling. Before we take a look at the weather forecast as we move into the weekend, here's the way the stock market ended the week. A very warm day here in the Ozarks with the humidity felt even warmer out there. Lots of sunshine around 88 degrees this afternoon here at our studios and looks like this warm trend that we finally locked into is going to stay with us for a while. They did take the rain out of the forecast that they had for Sunday afternoon. so. Now no rain over the next five days at least. Here's the way it looks as we move on uh, through the week and into the weekend. Uh, tomorrow looks to be about the same as today, slightly cooler under partly cloudy skies, 84 degrees on Thursday. On Friday, mostly sunny skies and 86 degrees. As we head into the weekend, 87 degrees on Saturday under partly cloudy skies. And for Mother's Day on Sunday, mostly sunny skies, a warm 91 degrees. Kick off the work week on Monday, about the same, partly cloudy and 90 degrees. Summertime is here. Stay with us, be back in a moment. We'll take a look at sports from around the region as TK08 News continues. Your summer starts here. With a great deal on a new Toyota, you can celebrate all the season has to offer. Like graduations, Mother's Day, camping, family reunions, paddle boarding, hiking, the beach, fishing trips, county fairs, road trips, me first. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $2,500 customer cash or qualified buyers get 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2018 RAV4. Offers end June 4th. Get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Summer is just around the corner and the staff at Harness Boots and Shoes are ready with all the latest styles of tennis shoes, sandals, dress shoes, casual shoes, boots, and hiking shoes. You'll find the most popular brands such as Merrill, Birkenstock, Chaco, New Balance, and Twisted X for men, women, and children. And if you don't find the style or color you want in stock, they'll be happy to order them for you. Don't forget, $10 down will hold anything in the store on Lillway. Harness Boots and Shoes on the west side of the square in beautiful downtown Harrison.
Lady Goblin soccer team will try to extend uh, two streaks. The first streak will be the team state title, uh, which Harrison has won the last uh, two state titles and look to add the third in a row. Harrison has claimed six titles since the existence of the soccer program at Harrison. Another streak that Harrison hopes to continue is a final four appearance in a row. The uh, Lady Goblins have made it to the semifinals of the Class 5A soccer since 2010, and they hope to make it nine in a row this year. During the eight-season run, Harrison has earned four titles, one runner-up trophy. Only three times was the team not successful in reaching the finals. Harrison is currently riding a 13-game winning streak in their postseason play. Five of those games came in the 5A West District Tournament action. The other eight games came in the state tournament play. Beginning play on Thursday will be at the Equity Bank Field. Harrison will face Whitehall. The contest begins at 10 a.m. Should the Lady Goblins win that contest, the team will face the winner of the Batesville and BB game at F.S. Garrison Stadium at 10 a.m. on Friday. If Harrison makes the semifinals, the team will play Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at F.S. Garrison Stadium. For Class 5A spring sports fans, a trip to Harrison is the ultimate goal. Harrison High School successfully landed four tournaments in Boone County. Beginning Thursday, 64 Class 5A teams will be visiting the area. First round games, quarterfinal contests, and semifinal events will all be held. The uh, finals for each tournament, however, will be played in Fedville at the University of Arkansas's campus. Times for the finals will be determined after the teams earn their way into the finals. The Arkansas Activities Association will work around graduation dates to accommodate those final dates. The Lady Bobcats of Berryville move into the Class 4A state softball tournament after finishing fourth in the Class 4A North Regional Softball Tournament that was held at Lincoln over the weekend. Berryville defeated Dardanelle in the opening round 14-9. The semifinal round was not as kind to the Lady Bobcats, however. The Lady Lions of Gravit shut out Berryville in that one 15 to nothing. Berryville was matched against Pea Ridge in the third place game where the Lady Blackhawks took the win in three innings. The final score was 16 to one. The state tournament will take place in Nashville at the high school there where Berryville will play the Lady Hornets of Harrisburg on Thursday at 10 a.m. And the 31st annual Futuristic Big Bass Tournament is scheduled for May 20th with several cash prizes to be given away. Anglers can launch from any location on Bull Shoals Lake, but hourly weigh-ins will be held at the Oaklawn Marina. The tournament presented by the Lake Norfolk Bass Club will begin at 7 a.m. and continue until 4 p.m. in the afternoon. At each hourly weigh-in, first place will receive $100, second place will get $75, and $50 will go for third place contestants. The overall Big Bass winner will receive a grand prize of $1,000. Dylan Bundy set a dubious modern-day record, yielding four home runs and leaving without getting an out, part of a 10-run first inning that propelled the Kansas City Royals past the hapless Baltimore Orioles 15-7. Bundy was lifted after allowing five hits and two walks to the only seven batters that he had faced. Baltimore has lost seven straight, and they're now 19-22. And that wraps up our broadcast here for this evening. Thanks for joining us. Join us Monday through Friday at 6.30 and again at 10 p.m. As we continue to bring you local news, weather, sports, and local announcements from around the area on Harrison's broadcast station, TKO Channel 8. Now stay tuned for more local events around the viewing area.